Well, here's Joe Biden just to kick it off because he, in that same Univision interview, he was asked, what's the biggest threat uh, to democracy right now? And here's how he answered. What in your view constitutes the primary threat to freedom and democracy at home? Donald Trump. Seriously. Donald Trump talk uses phrases like you're going to use a eviscerate the constitution. He's going to be a dictator on day one. Look at the way he, way he talks about minority populations, uh, Hispanics, you know, we're talking about them being, anyway, he says he's going to, I'm going to be a dictator on day one. No one doesn't believe him. Okay. So that's the president. And he, this and is a man who said, you, you, yeah, you're not black. He called one of his assistants. Where's my boy? He's got, we know what he said about Barack Obama. And more importantly, this is a man who just this week basically told the nation that he's going to ignore the Supreme Court and find a way to get around the Supreme Court prohibition of unilateral cancellation of student loans. And this is a president right now whose party is in in the Senate, and they're violating the Constitution. They've been given a writ of impeachment, and they're supposed to schedule a hearing. And Chuck Schumer is so paranoid about this because he's got Democratic senators up in states that they're probably going to lose the election, especially they will lose the election if they do not impeach Mayorkas, but they sanction Mayorkas and what he did to the border. And so they're not going to hold a trial. They're going to try to postpone it. And they've never done that before. And we haven't had never had a president who basically said the Supreme Court got me on the first chance. I'm going to try it again. We, not since FDR tried to pack the court, which they've also argued. And when you look at the whole picture, there's one party who trying to who got rid of the filibuster, who's trying to get rid of the electoral college, who's trying to pack the court, who's trying to bring in new states. Their whole idea is process. When the system doesn't get their intended result, then they want to change the system. They're the ones who are trying to get a presidential candidate off the ballot. They're the ones using lawfare. Joe Biden knows that. Every time he says, pay your fair share, I always think, well, your son is right now facing tax income tax fraud. Right. Why don't you just tell him to do it before you tell the nation to do it? So, so I, I think it's not, I think people have had it. I really do. Joe Biden, is not, right. he, he wasn't a nice guy. He's not a nice person. He's he's very crude. He's he's said things that were, were, I think, overtly racist. They've given him a complete pass on the way that he bothers the private space of women. He says things that about himself that are completely untrue. He makes up stories about, you know, he was Greek or he was Puerto Rican or he was this <laughs> and that or a truck driver or he was a great athlete and he was the first person in his family ever to go to college was a blatant lie. He just does it every day. And he he's was not all a sympathetic it. character. It's like yeah, he went to the mall have... food court and picked every ethnicity and said, that's how he was raised. That was exactly. the church I went to. That was my neighbor who raised me. That was my uncle. Wait, I've got to get this Kamala Harris soundbite in, which took it a step further on this podcast. Uh, I think it was yesterday. It's not four. I don't think it's hyperbolic to say this genuinely could be the last democratic election we ever have. You're right. No, and I'm going to tell you, as vice president, I've now met with over 150 world leaders, presidents, prime ministers, chancellors, and kings. And in the last three international trips I've taken, um, which are, you know, going back to the end of last year through this year, um, world leaders have come up to me expressing their real concern Last Democratic election ever. This is it. This is a this is a person who was elected uh, after she said in June of 2020. These after there was a vi all these violent demonstrations. You know, 120 days, 35 people killed, 1,500 police officers injured, two billion dollars of damage. Police precinct court, iconic church torch, trying to storm the White House grounds to get at the president who had to go into a bunker. And she said, this is not going to stop. It shouldn't stop. This is going to go all the way to the election. And she's talking about disruptions to democracy. All she had to do is say she could have easily said we, we, we lost the Supreme Court decision on the student loans. So we have to follow the court decision. That's all she are. We're not going to let Mark Zuckerberg put four hundred nineteen million dollars to absorb the work of the registrars this time around. That work that that's not a good thing to happen in a democracy. Or we're not we're not going to we're going to make sure that every candidate gets on the ballot who's qualified. We're not going to take people's names off. 
It's all she has to say, but she's not going to say that. And it's, um, I agree that January 6th was a buffoonish riot, but it was not a full-fledged insurrection as the way that they talk about. That's a whole other topic. But in comparison to what happened in 2020 that was led by Antifa and BLM, it's no comparison in terms of violence, damage, arson, ruin people's lives, death. And they know that. And so... And you know what else, you know know what else, Victor, that gets undermentioned is January 6th, it it was a terrible day, but it didn't cause, you know, for the next three and a half years, death after death after death after death after death after death after death, death, like BLM riots did, because cops, thanks to the Ferguson effect and the, the George Floyd effect, were so put upon, were so demonized, they held back. And who got hurt? The black community. The inner cities, black communities, some Hispanic, they they died in greater numbers. Heather McDonald's going to be here soon. She's going to be talking about this, not today, but soon well, she, on the show. And, yeah. and, and she's done great work on this. And so, like, the, the, it's had ongoing negative effects. I mean, deathly effects on the very communities Kamala Harris purports to be uh, uh, concerned about. But there's no accountability for any of that. Well, the person that you just saw that hit the woman and knocked her off the steps of the church. And I think as she was laying there, he not only stole it, but she got up and st- went toward her car. And then he went and stole her car, if I'm not mistaken. But he he did that on the premise that he's not going to be arrested. If he's arrested, he's going to have no cash bail. If he should be incarcerated, he's going not to be indicted. If he's indicted, he probably won't be convicted. If he's convicted, he probably will be released. That's how he thinks about it. And there's no deterrence left. And that was part of this whole critical legal, critical race theory that the left gave us, that the laws don't mean anything. They're constructs created by wealthy white privileged people who warp things in their own interests. So it's it's against a lot of steel sneakers because some billionaire white guy doesn't steal sneakers, so he made a law so other people can't. That's basically critical legal theory. And they know what they've done. And I, I think we're going to see a lot of really desperate things go on. As we approach another critical election, many Americans are concerned. Recent studies reveal that an astonishing 56% of citizens report feelings of anxiety or dread about the upcoming election. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you about AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. AMAC is more than a senior org. During these challenging times, they fight for common sense and for the U.S. to return to traditional American values. Visit amac.us slash Megan today to get an exclusive election year special. Four years of AMAC membership for just 30 bucks. As an AMAC member, you not only enjoy money-saving benefits, but also the AMAC magazine, free Social Security and Medicare advice, a trusted voice in Washington, and a community of like-minded patriots. Take advantage of this election year special, four years for 30 bucks, and be part of the solution. Join now at amac.us slash Megan. That's A-M-A-C dot U-S forward slash M-E-G-Y-N. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.